Hey, welcome to another episode of Curator on the Loose. This time, I'm reviving our dueling duos concept in talking about the Japanese Nakajima Ki-43 Hayabusa and the American Curtis P-40 Warhawk. Since I'm standing right in front of the Hayabusa, let's start here. The Ki-43 was designed in response to a 1937 request from the Imperial Japanese Army for a successor to Nakajima's Ki-27 Nate, a small fixed gear fighter designed in the mid-1930s. The specifications called for an aircraft with a top speed of 300 miles per hour, the ability to climb to 16,000 feet in five minutes, and have a range of 500 miles all while still being as maneuverable as the nimble Nate. To improve their new fighter, Nakajima built a series of progressively modified aircraft from 1939 to 1940, and the changes included a slimmer fuselage with the tail surfaces moved further aft, a new canopy design, and cutting as much weight as possible. But it was the 11th prototype that introduced a pretty unique wing flap, which dramatically improved the plane's performance in tight turns. Sometimes called the butterfly flap, the Ki-43 had two Fowler-type flaps that extended down and back on a rail. The pilot could deploy their flaps to a maximum of 30 degrees up to 150 miles per hour. But in combat, they were deployed to 15 degrees, but at up to 248 miles per hour. As the flap slides out on this rail, it begins to increase the wing's lifting ability by increasing the camber or curve of the wing. But it also slows the plane down a bit due to the increased drag, so pilots had to use the flaps carefully. Now, lightweight and nimble, I'm giving this element of our dueling duos to the Oscar. We just took a look at the very cool Nakajima Ki-43 Hayabusa, codenamed Oscar by the Allies. Now let's check out one of its adversaries. Bam! The P-40 Warhawk, baby! And I don't want to say that I'm like kind of biased, but I did kind of dress like a P-40 today. By the time America entered World War II, the P-40 had been around for a while. The famous Flying Tigers used export versions of the plane in China, and the British put their tomahawks to great use in the western desert. And even the Russians used Lind-Lease P-40s to augment their decimated air force after the German invasion in 1941. The P-40 traces its heritage back to a 1932 Curtis design called the XP-31 Swift. While the Swift was a complete failure, it did lead Curtis to begin work on a new project called the Y-1P-36, which later became the Curtis P-36 Hawk. However, it was becoming more and more evident that the little P-36 was going to be outclassed by more modern foreign designs. To make the most of their work, Curtis had this crazy idea. Replace the radial engine of the P-36 with an inline engine and see what happens. The final version of the XP-40 mounted an Allison V-1710-33 engine that gave it a top speed of 366 miles per hour at 20,000 feet, and the design was given the okay to move into production as the H-81 in early 1940. However, the aircraft was not equipped with armor or bulletproof glass for the pilot or even self-sealing fuel tanks. Now, the P-40B corrected those problems, but that meant that while the P-40B was better prepared for combat, its top speed dropped to around 345 miles an hour. 
Curtis installed more powerful engines in later models, like the 1300 horsepower Packard Merlin V1650 that powered the P40F. Even though it lacked a two-stage supercharger, the performance of the P40 was still really actually great. Early models could cruise along at nearly 355 miles per hour, and the end model, like ours, could hit 378 miles per hour at 20,000 feet. The P40N had a 30 mile per hour advantage over the Oscar. So I gotta check this box for the P40. This is so cool. Oh, <laughs> caught me. Now the Oscar was really maneuverable and a deadly opponent. In fact, it shot down more Allied airplanes during World War II than any other Japanese fighter. But it had its shortcomings. On the plus side, the Nakajima pilots did get this great canopy with an all-around view. Check it out. It's actually really similar to the Zeke, but without all the framing to get in the way of your view. I'm totally giving this one to the Oscar. Where the P-40 really showed its stuff was in the punch it packed. Early models carried four 30 caliber machine guns and two 50 calibers, while later models like ours were equipped with six 50 caliber machine guns. The Warhawk could really play havoc with the lightly armed Zeke and Oscar. Those Browning AN-M2s could pump out between 600 and 800 rounds a minute. Now, times that by six, and that's enough lead to ruin anybody's day. This one's easy. The P40 takes this one hands down. Now, not only was the P40 well armed, but it was also armored. Some models had armor for the pilot, like this right here and around the fuel tanks, and even had a slab of bulletproof glass in front of the pilot's head, this right here. Pair that armor with self-sealing fuel tanks and a rugged airframe, and you got a plane that could withstand quite a bit of damage. Another easy one. The Warhawk gets the point here too. In all, nearly 6,000 Ki-43s were built, and they served until the end of the war, but by 1945, many Oscars were used as kamikaze platforms, which kind of begs the question, how'd we get this one? Well, the museum's aircraft is a composite of four different wrecked Ki-43s of several variants that were all recovered from Shumshu Island in the 1990s by noted warbird collector, Doug Champlin. This aircraft depicts a Tachikawa-built KI-43 Type 3A of the 3rd Shutai, which is Fighter Squadron, of the 54th Sintai, which is Fighter Group. They were based on Shumshu in the Kuril Islands in 1945. Squadrons there defended the home islands from American bomber raids operating out of the Aleutian Islands. Oh wait, nerd alert! Did you know that the KI-43 was named Hayabusa, meaning peregrine falcon in Japanese? The Oscar was designed by aeronautical engineer Hideo Itakawa, who went on to be one of the fathers of the Japanese space program. In fact, he was known as Dr. Rocket. And in 2003, Japan launched a spacecraft named Hayabusa in honor of Hideo Itakawa. How cool is that? If you're keeping score, you know this is a pretty close race between these two planes. The P-40 is ahead by one point, and it's three to two in the Warhawks' favor. However, there's one thing we haven't discussed. We haven't considered the pilots. Before the war, pilot training in the US and Japan was really similar. After completing preparatory military training, or boot camp, aviation cadets began flying lessons in primary school, 
and they flew simple and stable aircraft. The main purpose was to weed out those cadets who just didn't have what it took to be a pilot. But that's where the similarities stopped. After receiving their wings, an American pilot had about 200 hours of flight time. By the time a Japanese pilot joined their active duty squadron, they had over 300 hours of flight time under their belts. While the Americans stuck to their 200 hour limit, the Japanese didn't have that luxury. Shortages of fuel and equipment forced the Imperial Japanese Army Air Force to shorten the duration and quality of their training. In fact, by the end of the war, pilots were sent into combat with as little as 60 or 70 hours of stick time. And I am pretty sure you can imagine the results. While the training between the two nations was similar, the U.S. prevailed by the sheer number of pilots it trained. In 1938, Japan turned out 120 student pilots from its youth pilot program. However, a year later, America started the civilian pilot training program and graduated 982 pilots. But here's the real telling number. By 1945, Japan had produced 46,000 pilots, while America had cranked out over 193,000. That is nuts. Judging by the sheer weight of numbers, the outcome of the Pacific Air War was a foregone conclusion. So, who really wins this battle? The P-40 is ahead by one point, but I'm not awarding any points for pilot training because it really depends on who's sitting in the cockpit on any given day during any given dogfight. So technically, the P-40 wins, but I'm calling it an even match, and I know you will have opinions on that. So check in below, leave your comments, and let's discuss. Now. Thank you for tuning into this episode. It was an awesome one to do. And continue to tune in because you never know where we're going to be on the loose next. Look, I'm a P-40. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll crack myself up. <laughs>